Ladies right. and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, welcome to the welcome. Uh, welcome welcome <laughs> welcome every pony everybody to the brony drumming panel my name is drum machine we gotta get a drum roll Hey, all right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining the Brony Drumming Panel, A History of MLP Percussion. My name is Drummer Shy. Um, I've been a drummer for almost 15 years, been trained by a Berkeley uh, student slash professional. Um, I've worked with a lot of musicians. I'm currently in a band right now called Flying Jacob. They're an alternative band from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, make sure you check them out on um spotify and uh other places around um i've also performed at um BronyCon 2017 2019 as well as everfree 2019 and there is more to come um in the near future if this uh thing won't go away but anyway that's basically uh the performance side the collaborative side i've done um I've collaborated with Prince Whatever, Melody Brony, Abresque Symphony, um, and many others, Lavender Harmony, uh, The Taze, um, and many, many, many others. But mostly it's been done by uh, Melody Brony. Um, yeah. I have performed with musicians such as Luck Rock, um, Cyril the Wolf, um, some of and some of the other names like Forever Free Brony, um, Crusader. Well, one song from Crusader, and um, Tarby as well. If you guys recognize Tarby, um, let's see what else. Uh, that that's all I have for now. But hopefully more music, and hopefully more stuff to come. But anyway, that's not why I'm here. We're here because we have another person who's another drummer. Whirlwind. Hi there. Hi there, I'm Whirlwind. Um, I've played drums for about five years. Um, I've played for a number of musicians in the fandom. Probably, probably most recognizable Forest Rain and a um, couple other musicians. I mean, could go down the line. I played a couple cons. Um, so that's one way you might recognize me. The other way you might have a obsessive. I'm overly obsessed with Soren, okay? <laughs> <laughs> you see, he's, you know, he's... he's a, this little guy. So you might recognize this little guy. You know what? He, he's, he's, uh, he's obsessed uh, with Soren. Please, uh, please send help. Um, <laughs> so we're here today because we are here to talk about drumming in the Brony fandom. And I feel... What? Drumming? 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 <laughs> <laughs> so we we just want to give a huge shout out to um pony fest online and uh simul uh cole as well as as the rest of the staff members please give them yeah, a round absolutely. of applause please give a round of applause for the other panels that were on in the beginning of the morning and through night you guys have done an amazing job this community has done an amazing job especially people like us so mm-hmm. we we want to Thank you. Yay! Now they had to suffer through us. <laughs> no, I'm just joking. <laughs> now they gotta suffer. Um, <laughs> anyway, so let's get on to our drumming topics. Um, we already did introductions. Well, they were quick. Um, let's talk yeah, about um, what what really started. Actually, let's start. Let's start where we started out with drums. Um, Whirlwind, do you want to go first? How you? got into drumming. Oh, okay. Well, I mean, my story goes back to, let's see, 2015. That's when I started to pick up drums. And, um, I mean, this was in summer 2015. I was getting into different styles of music. I didn't care, like, what the heck I was listening to. But then I had an obsession with uh, three bands that kind of got me into the heavier, you know, heavy metal music, Pantera, Slipknot, and Metallica. And the three drummers of those to those bands was Vinnie Paul, who played in Pantera, Joey Jordison, who played in Slipknot, and uh, Lars Ulrich, who played in Metallica. And at the time, you know, I was like, I love this music. You know, it's aggressive, it's fast. And, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted, I've always been, I've always had 
uh, a sense of being rhythmic or rhythmic, whatever you want to say. So um, it was like when school came around that year, I texted my dad one day. I was like, hey, you still have the drum set in the closet? And he was like, yeah, have at it. So and then from there on out, I've been that's where I basically started my journey as a drummer. Nice. So and that's what really got me started into drumming. But actually, before I even before that even happened, I actually toyed around with drums back when when I was like nine years old, very briefly, that is. And I still have my very first set of drumsticks. I know if you can see that there, because the camera, I can't really pick up the lighting. Uh, but these drumsticks were given to me by my dad in 2007, and I still have them to this day. I don't play on them, but I just keep them for that purpose. Nice, so, nice, nice. That's my introduction to drumming. Um, what about you, drummer shy? What? What? You told me you've been playing for 15 years, haven't you? Yes, I have. Um, I've been playing yeah. for about 15 years so far. Um, what a crazy journey has been. All right, so basically, this is where I started off. I basically like 10 years more than me. Okay, so. <laughs> Here's the real story. I actually got a Fisher Price drum from my godmother and godfather. Uh, yeah. From Fisher Price, it was like an old toy drum set, and I was like banging on. Um, I was I was banging on one stick, and I was like super cute. I think there was a photo of it when I was a toddler, and then four years later, um, I think I've I I saw like a concert or something on like. Uh, on like on the television, it was probably like one of the concert series from back in the early two thousands, and then um, I was like, I want to play drums, and so I got my first pair of sticks, and then I got like a snare drum, just 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 a snare drum, and all and all I did was I I used my arms first and foremost, and and this is how I <laughs> carried the sticks. And, and I was banging them like this. And then I got lessons from my Berkeley, uh, teacher who, you know, who's a, who's a former student at Berkeley college of music in Boston. Um, uh, the Chris was his name and he taught me a lot about drumming. And then I got my first drum set, which was a Pearl. And then I started banging on it. And you probably seen an early video of me playing drums. That was like, my original drum kit um it, you still have that pearl drum set uh no i i took i gave it away to my uh high school um uh, yes one of the high school still has it yeah one of the one of, <laughs> one of my high schools still have it well it's it's already already destroyed already <laughs> oh wow um so Basically, that's where my dr drumming journey began. Mostly, inspirations are Rush, Dream Theater, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles, um, but, Boy. yeah, Metallica. I'm into that too. Um, Liquid Tension experiments and um, all the Dream Theater side projects. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Just yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Um, but honestly. But honestly I think think where I, I got more expanded into music was you, Whirlwind, because you were the one who introduced me to Tool. Hey, there you go. I'm wearing my Tool shirt right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fear of your inoculum. Woo! Yeah, and he said it right this time. Yes, I said it right this time. <laughs> I, I, I gotta be honest. I listened to the other Tool albums. They were so cool. Um, And now Danny Carey's now a part of my playing, so <laughs> thanks, Danny yeah. Carey. We appreciate it, um, but I guess we can. Oh, go ahead. But um, I, I, honestly, it's it's the biggest names are Neil Peart, Stuart Copeland, and Mike Portnoy. Let me tell you what Neil Peart was the most devastating thing of my life. When, oh yeah, you guys. So, so we're already go yeah we're already going on the subject of inspirations, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we are. So so I mean I mean. Let's all say, like, a lot. Neil Peart was a big loss for drummers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was pretty bad at the beginning of this year, I will admit. <laughs> but, you know, a bit. See, let me. Okay, so, here's my inspiration, inspiration background. Um, over the years, I've kind of brought a lot of inspirations to the table, and I've. Um, 
because for about, I took drum lessons for about two years with my drum teacher here in my city named Peter Wolf. And um, so I did that for about two years. And then I pretty much self-taught myself for all the way up till now. I mean, I'm still self-teaching myself how to play or learning new stuff on the drums. But uh, some of my biggest drumming inspirations right now, I'll give you my top 10. I always reevaluate this every day, but my top three, like my holy trinity of drummers that I, um, you know, I take a lot of inspiration from right now and adapt in my playing is Tim Alexander of the band Primus, um, Stuart Copeland of the Police, and then, of course, um, the late Sean Reinert of Death and Cynic. And that was another de another drummer death that happened in the beginning of the year. So then you have some other drummers. Uh, Danny Carey, as I mentioned, huge fan of him. Mm -hmm. And then you, and then um, I also have a, a very uh, diverse fascination of music as well because I listen to a lot of not just heavy metal or progressive rock. I listen to a lot of jazz and uh, funk as well. So other drummers in that genre that I uh, admire and that's kind of shaped my playing style is David Garibaldi of Tower of Power. Oh yeah, uh, Tower of Power. Power. Yeah, Lenny White of Return to Forever as well as Chick Corea. And um, another jazz drummer that I really love is Peter Erskine, who's played on many different jazz projects. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's kind of my background in uh, getting inspired by jazz drummers. So. Also, I want to show something on chat because this is something that's really important to me, and we'll be getting right. and we'll be getting into more about. Uh, the brony musician side of drumming, but I wanted to show you a couple stuff. If you are a drummer that's beginning or anything like that, and I know I've had talks with many, many other beginning drummers in Discord or any other site on the brony fandom, we've 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 had drummers that um, mm -hmm. that have come up to us, asked us questions about uh, starting out on drumming. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull out a few books that you guys should really like look into if you want to start becoming a drummer. Um, first and foremost, basic rhythms. Um, that's basically what you guys have to do. I know I know it's reversed if if it's on OBS, but um, this is what you have to do. But first, holding a stick is the first thing you gotta do if you want to start start out drumming and i know that's what every brony that's what some brony musicians want to start out as drums because that's i was always like that's you, when it comes to holding the stick yeah when it comes to holding the stick just allow it to bounce like just throw it down on like a practice pad or something like a bouncy surface like yeah. that just let it bounce yeah basically like bounce so you find that sweet spot with your full with your uh so what we what uh drummers call is a fulcrum your fulcrum is generally going to be like about 25% up the stick. Mm -hmm. And uh, I keep that with my thumb and index finger because that's what really supports it. Your supporting fingers is just what drives the movement. So yep. try to hold it like that. So, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so that's fulcrum for you. <laughs> basically, uh, this is how I regularly hold a drumstick. It's these, these, these three fingers. And then, and then you wrap it around and it's... <laughs> basically uh the two the two fingers I'll sneeze into the mic drummer yeah, i know uh yeah. basically <laughs> so this is this is like the full crumb in the thumb and then you get like rebound on it basically basically yeah. the, the these three fingers the ring finger in the middle Ladies and gentlemen, we do apologize for everything that's been going on. My computer has uh, blue screened. Anyway, uh, now that we're back on, let's continue on. We are back. Yes. Drummer Shy is back. We're gonna do. We're gonna try Woo! and get through the history as best as possible. Then we're gonna wrap it up uh, with Q and A in the Discord chat. Um, awesome. So. Let's talk about history with Brony drumming, first and foremost. Yeah, he's he's been playing, he's been drumming in the fandom. No, yeah. So you can go back further. Oh, we're and... going back further. We're going back further to the automated Jack days and the uh, and the acoustic Brony. So basically, 
2011 through 2012, you have a big rise in Brody musicians. Mostly notable was the rock musicians, mostly with um, Bronified and um, Acoustic Brony. But I think Ed from Acoustic Brony was like one of the first known drummers, and that's when everybody in the Brony fandom picked up sticks for the uh, Brony fandom. Um, and and also he was a part of a acoustic brony i mean if at some point we ever want to get him on a show for the second panel i mean we'll we'll be happy to but automatic uh, jack right uh not automatic jack we're, we're talking about ed ed from oh acoustic ed brony, yeah or remake tell me about this right yes um so uh 2011 through 2012 was the rise of other brony drummers and then um and then, and then it started to fall through within BronyCon 2012 through 2013, um, and other musicians as well. Most notable was Automated Jack was when he started to take the reins and then started to inspire a new generation. His his drumming was very hard. It reminded me so much of Taylor Hawkins from the Foo Fighters. Yeah, Taylor Hawkins. I got to see him play um, Foo Fighters. Nice. Automated Jack, if you guys don't know was a burning musician who made like dj music but he was also a he was also the main drummer for the group tarby if if you guys have been living under a rock in the burning fandom or in the rock oh well i mean not everybody knows tarby <laughs> but i mean yeah he was i guess he did tarby <laughs> tarby by the way please please go follow uh tarby on twitter He's, he's amazing, and I got the best opportunity to play with him. But I think that it's this is this is where the slump comes in with Brony Drummers. Uh, well, not, not really the slump, but it, it was starting to rise a lot until 2016 where it just started to slump a little bit. Uh, John Mima was the one who took the reins of uh, drumming. John Mima. In yeah, Dunn, John Mima. The man. Yeah. The man, the legend. The man, the meme, the legend. The uh the the guy who played Mimo. in the Wonderbolts. Let and me... he played for Prince Whatever back in twenty fifteen as well. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And he he's played, he's played for tons of artists. He's played for a tons. He's probably one of the most respectable drummers I could think of um in a while. But he's he's, he's definitely still has he's he still has an edge on me and probably you too, drummer Cheyenne speed and intensity that's for sure yeah well i gotta give huge major respects because he does so much bass drum double kicks and he's been uh never heard of this tarby well go check out his music mostly go check out his everfree album that was probably one of the best drumming slash concept and his drumming through programming drums sounded so clean and just it, it it sounded so good that it became such a fantastic concept album. Yeah. You know, I you know, I never even thought about this. Um well, we're still talking about history, right? Yes. All right. Um well what year are we in now? We well, are well actually you know what? Let's lead into this. Um Let's talk about experiences about playing at horse conventions. Yes, and let's talk uh, about this that. is let's this is that. this is what I wanted to ask you before I started this is um what what was it like playing at your first convention? My first convention My first was was very very war. I I you know and and plus playing in other bands, I didn't feel scared or worried. I. I thought I th I thought too much. Like I think too much a lot because I wanted to put on a good show for um, not only the Brony musicians but to my friends and colleagues as well. And uh, a lot of my friends, such as Little Shy and the rest of his friends, actually came to uh, my my first concert for the Cyril the Wolf concert, and they they were so supportive, especially Little Shy. He he was there for me, and I was there for them, and it's just. Honestly, it, it felt it felt really comforting, especially playing with Cyril because you know, it, it was Cyril's the man. Yeah. Um, let me say it was probably the best experience I ever had in my life, um, playing in front of that stage. So both both twenty seventeen and twenty nineteen, mm -hmm. and we yeah. and and 
and basically Black Griffin Michelle Kreber opened up for us. Mm-hmm. And that and that yeah. was and that was so nice of them to do that. Um, With Ian James Corlett playing on drums. Oh my goodness! I got, I never knew he played drums. Okay, I I'll never tell, knew he played. Drums. I'll tell you this: he was so excited when he got to play yeah. the big the big drum set when we had um, 2017. 2017. It was like it, he he was just excited. He was just ecstatic. So it, it was it was awesome. But I think. Uh, 2019 was, uh, no, 2018 was when John Mima was just, it, it was like one of the best productions yet, but I think 2019 took the cake because of how, how much stuff, how much emotion, how much creativity was being poured into that BronyCon concert. Uh, also, just a side note, I, I see someone commenting here about my avatar. Yes, that is Kipple. <laughs> um yeah um all right so like i said before i've been i'm fairly new to when it comes to being a brony musician or a brony drummer or rather uh i didn't manage to make it to performing at my first con until everfree northwest of last year and there's a little bit of backstory to this too because i've always wanted to play drums but at some point i've always wanted to share my talent with the fandom and um I remember one day, this was like 2017 or what. I remember just searching up drumming at Brony Conventions or something like that. And Drummer Shine's name popped up. And I was like, hey, no, this guy's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> so, and me, and then sooner than later, it was like, uh, actually, I, I still remember it too. Like, your first, I won one of your contests on YouTube. It's, uh, what was it? IDW Comic Giveaway or something like that. Yeah. And that's kind of yeah. what got me to know you a little bit. So that's why that's my hard. background with drummer shy. And uh, but back to 2019. So I've been like trying to find opportunities to perform at conventions. And I was starting I was slowly but surely creeping into the positions for this fandom. But it wasn't until um, what is it ever free? Like drummer shy was asking me, like, you're going to go as like, yeah, yeah, I'm going. Well, I'll, t- like, I'll tell gonna... you the story before I get into your story. So, yeah, <laughs> I wanted- oh, this is going to be interesting. This is how we became the bestest friends of all. And we've sent each other stuff. Um, I think what it all started was I was supposed to be the drummer, the main guy who does all the drumming for all the bands like Steel, uh, Stealing Shades, Forever Free Brony, and Forest Rain. But yeah, those are like the three. Well, they had Luna Jacks too. Luna, yeah. Luna Jacks those, is are, those are like the acoustic acts at Ever Free Nineteen. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I Forest Rain's like, hey, you gonna play on my set? And I'm like, hold up one minute. There's a drummer who has not played at a Brony convention in his life. And so I said, call up Whirlwind because you got to give this guy an opportunity of a lifetime. And so Forrest Rain did that. And I, and I had to be respectful because I know you wanted to play at a Brony convention so bad. And so I had to pull up Forrest Rain because I was already playing in Stealing Shades. I already, already was playing the music that was so heavy and pop punk. And I was already going to kill out my feet. So I think, um, you had to do. I I had to put you in for four I had to do it. Yeah, you were a perfect fit. And now look at you, a year and later. You, I I got fe- yeah. And then next thing you know, I got to be featured on two songs with Forest Rain. So I was like, there I am. <laughs> if you guys want to know how, head. if you guys want to know how he got on with collaborations with Forest Rain, me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I guess so. So yeah. anytime you're like, oh, Force Rain, oh, uh, Whirlwind is on a Force Rain track. I don't know how he got on. I'll just be like, you can talk to this guy right yeah. here. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, um, it's great. It's great having connections. It's great having giving yeah. giving people an opportunity. That that's what we need in this Brony fandom, honestly. Yeah. Uh, before we get to anywhere else, I just wanted to share. Some... We still got quite a bit of time till this panel wraps up. Oh yeah, so... we're gonna we're gonna have twenty five minutes. We get we get to was yeah. We're we gonna... still have a lot to talk about, guys. Right now, you guys guys can send your questions in the New World Nets uh, Nets stage questions on Discord. So if you guys like to ask anything about drumming or any any percussion, any any just, concert just ask, advice, or just ask anything, ask ponies, non pony questions. Yes. Um, 
Don't go into don't go too deep questions. So <laughs> no, <laughs> let's um, keep it PG here. <laughs> so I think before we get into all the questions, I got a couple things. One, we got to talk about what the gear what the gear we use. Um, I'll start. Oh, with... okay, the gear section. Okay, this is this is where stuff gets techy. Okay, so yeah. what I have right now is I have an Xair X32. It's like a X channel. I'm still trying to figure out the kinks. Next time, if I try to perform or something, I'll, yeah. I'll hook up my X32 and I'll do like a drumming mix. It's like yeah. it's, it's 18 channels, one line in, and 17 and 18, and it's it has well, a, I mean, okay, it has an ultra net and then also a USB plug in. Hang on, uh, I'm reading this thing. I'm reading this thing that uh, Mayflower said. It said good, good, awesome swag question. And later, oh, okay, that's pretty cool. All right, but you mentioned gear, so here's a little story. Um, I said this. See, I I said this exact thing when Drummer Shy decided to leave the stream out of nowhere. But um, this drum set, this exact drum set, um, my father bought it in 1999. I want to say either that or 2000, but definitely when I was a kid, because he played drums when he was in his youth, and you know when he got a little bit older, but um so he played this kit has basically been in my family for forever basically and i still play on it to this day it's a premier xbk birch drum set i thought it was a maple drum set but it's a birch drum set mm -hmm. and uh, i've been playing on it ever since and i really wish i could have taken it to BabsCon this year for tw uh 2020 but you know you know what happened <laughs> yeah you pretty much know you know what happened. You want to know the drum kit that I have? You guys have probably seen it in all the BronyCon live streams. Ah, the Brad Burgundy. The Red Burgundy this Tama is kit. The, this is the original um, BronyCon Super Band drum kit, officially. Um, it's it's a Tama Silver Star uh, uh, Birch birch kit it's uh 12 for it's 12 hey you're a birch you're a birch boy too word up um yes yes i do uh all the heads are remo and the slingerland snare drum was my most noble prize possession because that's where neil peart used to play on those back in his you know in his early yeah. uh fly by night days and uh counterpart days uh, spanning through an entire albums uh, for the snare job. Oh no! Please, I forgot to mention. Oh, no. I I forgot to mention. Oh, I have an no. avid, I have an avid collection of. I have my own collection of snare drums too. I own eight, but this is my crown jewel of the collection. It is a um is a it's made out of Jarrah hardwood, and Jarrah is a pretty exclusive wood from Australia. It's um it comes from a eucalyptus tree, I think, mm -hmm. but um. This is made by Brady Drums. It's in a burgundy fade. And the only thing that the color reminds me of is Tempest Shadow. So I have named this snare drum Tempest. And it is an amazing sounding drum. So that's the crown jewel of my collection. <laughs> well, there's another snare drum I do want to show before we get into Q&A. Um, oh, yeah, I guess we, so. we do have questions. We can go talking about gear for hours, honestly. All right. Um, we're, so, see, we're, so, we're so techie in this stuff. Uh, I mean... Uh, well, it's already on my drum kit. The other snare drum I have is a 12-inch Melody Master, which is Mike Portnoy's uh, signature. Um, okay, we got a lot of questions. Before we get into any of the questions, we're going to get through this quick because I don't know if we have yeah. time to do this. Um, well, we have 14 minutes. I'm going to show you some uh, magazines that you guys have to read. Uh, this is Modern Drummer Magazine. This is basically of course Mike Portnoy. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. I I had to yeah. I had to insert best drummer in the freaking world. Um, yeah. Also Neil Peart as well. This is one of the original Zildjans before he got in. Also some other drummers as well. You got uh, Dave Weckl, um, Greg Bissonette. Now now this is one of my other huge influences. This guy. Listen to Frankenstein by him. It is unbelievable. Um, uh, Paul Lebatori, uh Jr. from Paul McCartney. He's a fantastic drummer. We only got three minutes. Uh, Corn. Anybody know any Corn? All right. All right. 
Um, yes. Yeah, Corn's Ray L- Razor. His his drumming's absolutely amazing. He's also on the David LaRoth band back in the day. Not the original drummer. He's uh, the original drummer was Greg Bissonette, but he he played for David um, LaRoth. Tommy Igo's one of the other drummers, but we could just leave him out. <laughs> um, no, Tommy Igo's a good jazz drummer. Yeah, Dom- Tommy Igo's a good good jazz drummer. But D- anybody listen to Deep Purple? This this drummer's amazing. He knows how to keep a progressive rock beat so good. And also, if you want to know how many great drummers there are, read this. This is. Greatest drummer? I didn't see that one actually. That you. Had. The great. You want to know what the greatest drummer of all time is, and it is debated about. The greatest. It's Neil Peart, isn't it? No, it's not. Ginger Baker. Uh. uh Ringo Starr. John Bonham. Buddy Rich. Can you just chill Keith out? Moon. Keith Moon. <laughs> Come on, man! I'm trying to show you. Tommy Aldridge. <laughs> okay. Bill Ward. <laughs> Here we go. Well, Neil Peart's actually number three on the page. Oh, really? Oh, I see Tony Williams there. I'm Williams not. Um, I'll tell you that. Um, Buddy Rich is number one right here. He's okay. number one. Sweet. All right. Now we're getting into the questions. Uh, let's start with Evershade. Yeah. I know that I know that a problem with some drum players drum players face when having trouble loosening up not playing so stiff playing with the wrist any tips for overcoming that for those who are struggling with this aspect uh, i can explain that whirlwind go ahead um so the faster you play the more loose you're going to be playing the less movement you're going to make so you can physically i mean uh and the same applies to the feet as well so um but you know you can't physically play it like you can't physically play like a snare roll at like 200 bpm like i I can't do it because you know you know so the way to uh, develop that looseness is through different different methods and for me i use finger control and finger control it takes a lot of practice to get it down right and to get the to get the feel of it but it does allow you to play faster at the extent of playing much looser without using that much. But it takes yeah. a lot of practice, yeah. so. It takes a lot of practice. Personally, me, yeah. uh, for any any tip, uh, same same with what Whirlwind said, but sometimes I usually just practice, you know, trying to, if you're a beginning drummer, just practicing, you know, learning how to bounce the stick. Let me just well, make yeah. this perfectly oh, clear. Let me, let me let me make this clear. And I've seen drummers, and I'm not going to name them. I've seen drummers use their entire hand. Do not do that, please. This is all in the wrist. So, boy. <laughs> um, no, but this is all in the wrist, basically. Um, and then practicing with it. Because, honestly, doing it with the arm will kill it. So... Um, uh, yeah. that's all I have to say. We got it. We got to keep going. Uh, question for me, favorite song you've been featured on. I'm going to have to say the King with all Prince right. whatever. All right. Favorite song I've been featured on, uh, Chrissy 2.0, which is the nightmare mode version on the, uh, ponies at dawn. Um, echoes, right? Echoes. <laughs> you can see how bad I'm in, but um, yes, the Echoes album. That's got to be my favorite, just because even though that I didn't write, even though that all the drum parts were not written by me, the original track was written by Forrest Rain, but um, I did. I put my own little spin on it, and uh, really, the reason why she wanted to do the Nightmare was actually from a performance at Cider Fest. Actually, is at Nahum too, which is at the Cider. Fest. But yeah, that's my favorite. So, all right. So here's a here's another question from Mayflower Train said: If you could take over as a drummer for any active artist for one concert, who would it be? Um, I would say. I like that question. Oh my goodness! Then I, then I get scared because then you realize, like, oh no, it's not the drum. It's not. It's not insert name drummer. I think the one. Who's band, this guy? I think the one band I would really like to take over. For just just for one concert is the Foo Fighters. Their songs are so much fun to play on drums. Really, I'm I'm very shocked by that. I'm surprised you not you did not say either Dream Theater or 
Um, Dream Theater and Rush, I I put them out of I I put them in respect that I cannot I cannot replace the one the master. I don't know if I were to able like to fill in for one drummer at a show. I don't know, man. That's like that's like such a subjective question. I mean, I would love to fill in for Tim Alexander or Primus just because that you know. I, I love a lot of his playing style, and I kind of picked up a lot of what he's played. But um, I don't know. I don't really know. I see, with jazz, it's a little bit different because, you know, there's a bunch of different drummers who play in jazz. Yeah. Like, like, for, like take um, take uh, Chick Corea, for example. Like, he's had tons of – but I don't know. All right. Um, Probably I'm Tim Alexander Primus. <laughs> I'll just – we're gonna go. We're gonna go to the next question. We gotta. We gotta move quickly. Uh, Drake Emberhart. Uh, this don't is rush for, though. I won't. I won't. Um, <laughs> okay. So this is for Whirlwind. You you you, you, right. you told me that drumming for Osage was hard. Hard and explain. Can you please explain? Oh boy, Osage, if you're watching this, thank you for letting me play in your set at Nahum One, because um, that really broke me into playing faster and harder styles of drumming uh now keep in mind as i mentioned at the very beginning i kind of got brought back up you know what made me want to play drums was like you no know, the heavier styles of music pantera slayer metallica etc uh but um you know i never really you know i never really got to the point to where i can play that stuff live and but because uh, he i mean this goes way back with me and osage um like he liked the, my playing style and, you know we talked back and forth like devin townsend and stuff but uh and so when i learned his music i spent like two months in preparation just to like get my speed up my control up and man it was a lot of work but it was totally worth it oh yeah i wish i i still wish i got a I still wish I can upload that video footage I have, but I don't have all the references. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. there, there, there's a there's a question for me, and it says, uh, "Is being a drummer on one of L Train's synthetic metal rock operas a goal for you?" Well, I kind of completed that goal. I played Rainbow Factory because this was a last minute decision, um, but I had so much fun playing L Train stuff. Um, L Train is very fun to play on but his some of his stuff is very complicated but i'll definitely sit I, I would down probably, and learn i could probably play his stuff maybe yeah um so let's go to brony otaku lt and his question is what was the first band y'all listened to rush uh first band i ever listened to that i remember pearl jam because my father introduced me to such great amount of music so pearl jam thank you dad <laughs> Okay. okay, so, um, yeah, yeah five we, minutes. We got five minutes. Okay, let's get through these. Hey, we're all in. Okay, this. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this one's from Nolan Fuff Crush. Hey, world. Oh. How are you so talented? I would have expected you to have been drumming longer, not only five years. Not really a question. Just, just decided to be. Well, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, um. I've self-taught myself for three years, took drum lessons for two years, but uh, one of the things that really let me to get to where I'm at now is just keep playing and practicing. Uh, I mean, there's there's nothing really more. I mean, if you want to get good, you got to practice to something. But exactly. um, at the same time, I like to try and change my vocabulary. I like to try different styles. Like one of the things I've been trying to do is trying to lead drums by left hand instead of my right hand. And um, that's a totally different, lang- totally new language for me that I've been trying to learn this year. But um, yeah, just keep on practicing something new. And yep. yep. Um, <laughs> who was the first? Uh, this from Doctor Freedom. Who was the first drummer to ever play? At Freedom's a here. Freedom. <laughs> uh, what do you say? I said I was like Freedom, and he said, "Who was the first drummer to to ever?" Who was the first drummer to ever play at a Brony convention, and which convention was it? I think it was BronyCon 2011, but I could not recognize what drummer it was. It was, it was the drummer. I think it was one of the drummers from Jackalap, I believe. And uh, some say he's on the some say he's on the FBI's most wanted list. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, he. I. I honestly don't know. I would have to go back look at footage, but he's probably out in the black hole somewhere. Um. So Firefrights has said, drummer shy. Can you pinpoint a movement or a reason that drove you to start playing drums? Um, once again, it was Neil Peart who made me start playing drums because of his big drum set. I always want it. That's my main goal in this fandom. I want to have a huge drum set so I can, you know, do all stuff. Look, a, a kick, snare, tom, ride cymbal, and hi-hat is good. It's complete. But I wanted to really add to the dynamic of rhythm and add to melodic stuff. Um, it's mm-hmm. all I wanted to do. Um, you just you, you're just Mike Portnoy and Neil Peart Jr. Uh, <laughs> that's basically <laughs> they had it. A baby. I heard you yelling at me. Um, during Tarby's. Uh, oh, song, shut so, up! Yeah, you heard that? I, I heard that. I heard that. <laughs> I, I heard that. I heard that. I, that made my day. Um, May, okay. May, Mayfeller train set also has another question. Uh, he says most underrated drummer of all time in your opinion. Um, underrated drummer. Uh, oh my gosh, that's such a hard question. Um, well, it's so subjective too, but, um, I'm going to have to say this because a lot of other drums say it, but it's got to be Ringo Starr. It's got to be Ringo Starr. It's got to be Ringo Starr. I mean, Ringo Starr, I mean, I don't inspire that much from Ringo Starr, but he is critically underrated when it comes to the drummers that came after him. Um, because he really established the foundation of rock drumming and changed it to an entire different level when the British invasion came in the early 60s. So, yeah, yeah, Ringo Starr, I would say, is the most underrated drummer of all time. Uh, I agree as well. Um, All right, so this is probably the last question of the night pretty much for the entire panel. Thank you so much to everyone who joined in. Uh, This is going to be our last question of the night. Biggest pet peeve relating to performing drums. You go. Leg cramps. Leg uh, cramps. I hate leg cramps. Finger they cramps. They hurt. I got to say finger cramps as well. You get finger cramps? I get finger cramps. Seriously, you like do- crazy. Like every time when I'm bouncing my you fingers. Stretch, man. You got you get, I know, you get that's what I do. Spin. That's exactly <laughs> what I do every performance. Um, nah, leg cramps suck. I, then you all of a sudden you start locking up and you can't do all your motions. I know, so all the cramps <laughs> all inside you, that's basically the physical body of being a brony musician. I know brony musicians have done like DJs and stuff. Try being a drummer. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is the hardest thing ever and i know there's a lot of drummers out there like drumstick pony automated jack uh john mima yourself uh woody, woody. woody let's let's give a huge shout out to woody because he is one of the og the people he's the one who started it all og anyway um i think that might be all yeah. I think that's a wrap up. Sorry for the delay. We are we apologize for the delay. We tried to get as much information out as we can. I just want to say thank you so much to Ponyfest Online for giving us a chance and getting this panel out there because this was in production for about three years. And I just want to say thank you so much for giving us the opportunity. And let me just say, let me just say Brony music is Brony not music. dead. We're still gonna keep still going. Dead. And it's gonna aspi- inspire. Line, yeah, say the line. It's gonna inspire another generation and another generation. I'm gonna say it. We're still We're here. We're still here. Yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. enjoy the rest of right. Money Fest online yeah. and have a great rest of the convention. And we'll see you on the other side. See you later. Bye.